There we go. So, uh, hi, my name is Clara. I'm the writer and the director of Mzara, Hunger, the movie. Our premiere is coming up, pre-premiere is coming up on December 19th of, uh, of, this, uh, uh, of this year, 2020. Uh, and uh, we have here one of our fabulous, talented, worldly, what else, what else can I call you, a cosmopolitan, uh, very wise, <laughs> and very interesting. <laughs> no, I'm being honest here, I'm being serious. <laughs> Actors, uh, Brian, so maybe you can introduce yourself, uh, Brian. Uh, well, so. well, well, quite, quite a, 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 a magnificent uh, introduction. Thank you very much for that introduction. It's so nice. Wow. This is what you, how you see me. I'm so dumbfounded. I'm so humble. Oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, like uh, what Clara said, uh, my name is Brian. I am from Zimbabwe, currently staying in Poland, uh, in Łódź, and also one of the um, actors in uh, Zara, the movie. And I'm so glad, so glad to be part of this project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, Brian, uh, Brian, maybe you can tell us a little bit uh, about Zimbabwe, yeah, about your country. Mm. Um, what, what is it like? You know, because uh, a lot of people and a lot of the people who will be watching Zara, they've never been to Zimbabwe. Maybe Nzara, the movie, is their first encounter with Zimbabwe, their first encounter, of course, with Great Zimbabwe. And they're like, eh, you know, they barely know that maybe it's in Africa somewhere. So what would you tell those people about, about your country? Okay, uh, that, that would be like, um, uh, I wouldn't say tricky question, but uh, I would like to, to, to put it out to the open that when I'm talking about my country, is the motherland. And when I'm talking about my motherland, I'm going to explain it just as I am trying to explain my mother, my own mother, who gave me birth, or who gave birth to me, mm -hmm. right? right? Mm -hmm. So now the thing is, Zimbabwe is, oh, when I think of Zimbabwe, now, now I'm in Poland, I have got something that is so spectacular to, to, to distinguish it from. When I think of Zimbabwe, I always think of its uh, natural fruits whatever it is, which is so natural, mm -hmm. but Zimbabwean. Because when I think of home, first of all, of course, when it comes to food, I think of salsa. Because uh, I, I, don't get <laughs> I don't get to eat salsa every day here. Mm -hmm. And if I get it, I'm like, I'm, it's like, wow, I have never been uh, uh, in this situation whereby I cannot get salsa because I have to eat salsa every day when I'm at home, but now, once in a while or once in blue moon. So when I think of Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe is just like uh, a mother who has just given birth to a child and the mother is just smiling to a child and saying, wow, come back, take care of me. I am your mother. I gave birth to you. I managed to see you growing up. I managed to give you everything that you needed. Although here and there, there are some stumbles, of course, any mother would, face some fights with the child right but uh, I feel like Zimbabwe is always saying come back you need to take care of me I also need to see or I also need to enjoy the fruits that I gave birth coming back to me again to nature me mm -hmm. so as for me if I look at Zimbabwe like what most of people would think that most probably Zimbabwe is just like a jungle where you can see <laughs> animals running up that Zimbabwe is it's just it's a normal country uh, most probably just like uh, Poland or just like Warsaw. We also have a capital city, Harare, which is so nice and beautiful and also needs to be maintained, of course, just like any other, uh, any other city or any other uh, country. Zimbabwe has got natural resources. We have got a natural, a, a, a national park that is Wange with all or most of the animals that you would need to experience in life. If you go to Zimbabwe, you wouldn't want to go back. With the experience that I have with the people here in Poland, they love the nature side. The nature side, they love it. I don't know why, or most probably it's because they have stayed mostly in the cities or they have experienced more uh, of the city side. But if they go to Zimbabwe, 
they tell you they wouldn't want to come back. Not talking about the weather. Mm. Because of of course they would love the weather. Mm, yeah, the they sun. would love yeah. the weather, they would love the sun always. But also the nature uh side, they would love it. They would really, really love it. Mm. Zimbabwe is um it's it's a country that is um that has got that has given birth to not only people who are now most of the leaders or who are doing wonders outside it, mm-hmm. but it has also given continued to enrich its soil to begin with and then its people secondly and also it has continued to educate the young people to grow up knowing what they are and how they should expect it when they go outside so this is the reason why if you go to most of the countries i think there were some jokes that if you go to it will will be difficult to go to any other country and not find a smug in there Mm, yeah, everywhere yeah, yeah. is Zimbabwe is there. So I'm proud of my country that at least there is something that we are doing. It might not be seen one way or another, but there is something that we are doing that is so breathtaking. We are building our country. We are bringing pride back to our country. It might not be seen, but Zimbabwe is giving birth to the fruits that are all over the world, mm. one way or another. So Zimbabwe is still a mother. And when it looks at its fruits, the mother is just smiling. Wow. Oh. So Zimbabwe is looking at you right now and smiling and saying, <laughs> and oh. Think, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've given birth to an act of Zara. <laughs> and I know most of the people, Polish people, most probably, let me say, because they are the ones who are also going to be, maybe on first year, going to experience this uh, movie, first year. Mm-hmm. They are going to experience what it is to be in, a, in, in Zimbabwe. Just a drop in an ocean, they, they are going to test Zimbabwe. And then, as you said, they will never want to come back anywhere else. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you for sure, they will never want to go back. Mm. They will never want to come back to Poland. They will want mm. to stay. <laughs> stay inside. Of the, <laughs> to stay inside. Of, yes. Well, we, yeah. we certainly hope that for, for our audience. Uh, yeah, no, that's very beautiful what you said, and it's very beautiful your uh, your love for your country and your pride in your country is very, very beautiful. It uh, it warms the heart very, very much. Uh, so maybe also you can tell us a little bit about Great Zimbabwe and about uh, what is Great Zimbabwe? What does it mean also to to you, to your friends and family in Zimbabwe, to the people of Zimbabwe? Because, you know, most people, and especially in Poland, for example, uh, we know about the pyramids. Everyone knows about the pyramids. But then uh, when, you, when you talk about Great Zimbabwe, people really have no idea uh, what it is they don't know that there is this stone structure in southern africa that actually we here in the west let's say even though we are in the eastern part of the west but still um you know that we that we don't know how it was built that the architecture of it is so astounding that we now in our contemporary times would not be able to to match it um and that a civilization was there that did something like that that's not what we think of when we think of Africa. Thank you very much. <laughs> and like I had said before, that you know Zimbabwe has got its own uh, its own fruits that are so unique. And when you when you experience them, you and you 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 see the other side of um, of the intellectual part of the people who were there. Although we might say uh, some people might say maybe civilization was coming or is still coming somewhere somewhere. I, I, I want to say it was always there. Because when we talk about Great Zimbabwe, it's great. Great Zimbabwe is just great. <laughs> it's just yes. great. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. When, they were, when they were building Great Zimbabwe, I, I got the chance to visit Great Zimbabwe. And I'm going to, uh, in, in explaining it, I'm going to, to, to say things that I, I heard mm-hmm. uh, when we were just growing up. These are stories that we were, we were told. Mm-hmm. These are stones that are on top of other stones. Mm -hmm. No cement, they're just stones on Mm -hmm. top of each other. And if you see the walls, they are so magnificent. Mm -hmm. You know, they were building it, it's it's a fort. And somebody say it's a fort because uh, it is um, um, equated to Fort Victoria or close to Fort, Fort Victoria. But if you see Victoria, uh, I mean, sorry, I'm now going to Victoria, uh-huh. but if you see uh, Great Zimbabwe in itself, mm-hmm. it's, it's the, uh, the monument of the country. 
because uh, like I said, in ESA, they say that's where the name Zimbabwe comes from. Mm -hmm. So it's called Zimba Zimbabwe, House of Stones. Mm -hmm. So the House of Stones from Zimba Zimbabwe, the Great Zimbabwe, then gives birth the name Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So which means if Great Zimbabwe has given birth to the name of the country, which means it is great, not only to itself, but to the whole nation. Mm -hmm. So when I visited Great Zimbabwe, what I saw there, uh, I, cannot, I cannot actually explain it as it is, but I would really love someone to go and experience, just to get that experience. It's like on top of a mountain, or you will be going on top of a mountain whilst you are there in the, in the small city of Victoria Falls. In that small city, there's that Mashingo, <laughs> yes, yes, in Mashingo. But in Mashingo, there is another city in Mashingo. In that city in Mashingo, I call it Great Zimbabwe. It's a city on its own. We, we call a city something that is, but most probably we, in, uh, in uh, a term that would say it's uh, uh, civilized with uh, electricity or production or what. But I would call Great Zimbabwe a city on its own, that place. Because this is the heart as each way of the country. Mm -hmm. So when I went there, just to, to go around it, you need at least the whole day to understand what it is. This is just a drop in an ocean, just to go one day, because you'll be rushing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you need actually more days to experience Great Zimbabwe. Because you cannot just go up the mountain running, and then you just go down just like that, because you'll be tired. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are some caves where you need to go through to experience what was done here, what were they doing here. And there are some places, some huts, and there is a point whereby when you go up on top of the mountain, you will see everywhere where the king was staying. Mm -hmm. So the king would see everywhere, would see everyone. Mm -hmm. And they say, this is where the king was staying. And you will see the whole family in the whole village mm -hmm. because the king was there. And no one would dare to go there because that's the place of the king. Mm -hmm. And when the king calls you there, it's either you get something that is important that you are supposed to be discussing with the king or you had done, done something that is wrong. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't just go there. Mm -hmm. So the king is on top and everyone is looking at the king. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we perceive that God, well, I'm not saying the king is God, but we perceive that God is up and he's looking at his children. Mm -hmm. And then he has given that to the fathers to look upon their children. This is what the king has, done, has always done, looking at the children, looking at the country, mm -hmm. great Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So Great Zimbabwe is, is something that is so breathtaking. And these walls, just imagine, they are still surviving. They are still there. Mm -hmm. And if you see them, you wouldn't know that they have, got survived. They have survived for so, so long. Mm -hmm. They are still there. And if you look at them, people, they all perceive that there is always Great Zimbabwe and they are proud of Great Zimbabwe. And this is the reason why it is called Great, because it is great. Mm, yeah, it yeah. is really great. Yeah, yeah. no, it is. Yeah. It is it's very uh well it's like in Zara in the movie where you were saying about the king, right? The exactly. king is like the sun. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> the king is like the sun. Of course, they're yeah. up there and you cannot touch the king because it's the sun. If you touch this, you cannot even dare to go closer to the sun. No. no. Yes. You'll burn. Yeah, you'll burn, yeah. That's how it is. Yeah. That's how it is. Yeah. Actually, this is the reason why I'm saying that the movie also says it. You know, this is how the king is. And the people are always saying, we need to feed the king. If the king is happy, the whole village is happy. Mm -hmm. So the people are looking up at the mountain and they are defending their place. They are defending where they are. What is it? Mm -hmm. Mashingo, the great Zimbabwe. They are defending it. Mm -hmm. But they are defending it inside and up there, there is the king. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Great Zimbabwe depicts what the country is supposed to be. We are supposed to be protecting our own country. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to be there to help our country, to feed our country. Whilst the king is there, if we feed the king, we, he's not only a servant to us, you know? Mm -hmm. He's a servant, he's a king. At the same time, he wants to provide us, but we also provide to him so that he provides us, so that we fight. Together with him, we fight together, and we get the food, we feed the people, the people are happy. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's also the Great Zimbabwe gives a, a different vision for what uh, leadership can do for people, exactly. uh, which is very different from all of the, I would say, corrupt politics all around the world right now, where politics has become divorced from actually trying to make people's lives easier, better, healthier. Uh, yeah. If you check on Zara's movie, okay, I'm just, I mm -hmm. imagine I'm referring to what you wrote. <laughs> Me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we check in Zara, in uh -huh. Zara the movie, um, you know, there's that part when people try and they fail. Mm -hmm. And they say, what now? And the king comes and says, let's go. Let's do it. We can do it. Mm -hmm. And then the king comes and says, okay, fine, we have failed. So let me go myself. As your servant, let me go and probably I will have to talk to the moon softly and swiftly as the king mm -hmm. now the king is giving not only to himself to the moon but he is giving himself through the people to the moon mm. i have come i am the leader of these people can you open your mind mm. open your heart mm. feed these people mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. they are trying they are trying and struggling to feed me but feed them mm -hmm. i can die mm -hmm. but my people should not die mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, that's very true. That's very true. Also, a different idea of the leader as a servant. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even in Zara the movie, it takes the whole journey of being so crushed <laughs> for the leader to finally become a servant. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it um it it is like that in different situations that we struggle mm -hmm. to make our leaders servants because they always think that yeah, I am a leader, so I should just sit. I should just sit and wait to be fed. And then I grow fat each and every time. Grow fat. Grow fat <laughs> but you know, when you are sitting in a chair and you are eating, you don't stand up, you are eating and you become fat, you become stuck in the chair. Mm -hmm. And when you die, it is difficult for people to take you out of that chair. Mm -hmm. But now, there the movie, out of that struggle, one way or one day, the king decided to go out. Mm -hmm. he, decided, he, he discovered that, okay, the people want to feed me, mm -hmm. but I also want to be there for my people. Mm -hmm. I need to serve them. Let me go. They cannot struggle on their own. Let me go. Mm -hmm. So, like, we, one day, we always, we're always hungry, but one way or another, we find ourselves getting food, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I always say, one way or another, things will be fine. Mm -hmm. One way or another, the king will go down and will go and ask the food from the moon. Mm -hmm. And will go and ask the moon to come down and give us the food and we'll have that food. Mm -hmm. The whole nation will be fed. Mm -hmm. The whole nation will be at peace and enjoy the fruits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if you have no idea what we are talking about when we talk about the moon feeding and all that kind of thing, watch our movie <laughs> and you will find everything out and you will also be well fed uh, because that is the, the idea and the purpose behind this movie. So that's, uh, so that's very wonderful. So you came all the way from this beautiful country of Zimbabwe, you came all the way to cold and gray Poland <laughs> with all these sad people. <laughs> say uh, people in Poland are sad. Most probably it's because of the weather. Yeah. Most probably yeah, yeah, because yeah. of the weather. Yeah. But it's not always cold. Well, in summer, of course, you see many people going out. But uh, how, what I loved about Poland the first time, it, the first time I visited Poland was in 2016 mm -hmm. when Poland hosted the World Youth Day. Mm -hmm. So when Poland hosted World Youth Day and the Pope was coming, I also came with uh, others from Zimbabwe. And then later on, I decided, you know, I want to go back to Poland. You know, I had an experience. We were only, we had a group of about five people. Mm -hmm. So we were working together. And each and every time where we would want to sing, we would just sing. And people were there, they would just watch us and enjoy whatever we would be doing. So we had an experience of a life. Mm. So now what happened was when we went to Krakow, we stayed one week in Wuch, in Lodz, and then we went to Krakow. When we went to Krakow, uh, where we were staying and where we were uh, having our um, 
day to day meeting. Uh, the distance was, uh, was that uh, we would need to get a bus at the pump. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we didn't know the stop, the name of the stop, where we were supposed to get the bus from mm -hmm. going back home. So to get the tram from the center to go to that stop and then from that stop home, it was difficult for us because we didn't know. Mm -hmm. We had forgotten. And worse, because there were many people uh, in, in the center, trams and buses were no longer allowed to get into the center. So you would walk. Mm -hmm. And we are new in the city. Mm -hmm. We are new to the language. Mm -hmm. We are new to the people. Mm -hmm. And this is most probably all of us the first European country to be. Mm -hmm. So in that confusion, at the same time, we are so excited. Mm -hmm. So in this confusion, we are trying to, uh, to look for a way to go home. It happened three times that we got lost. Mm -hmm. We took tram that was going opposite direction of where we were supposed to go. Mm -hmm. And we met, in those three consecutive days, we met three different Polish mm -hmm. people who didn't even know how to speak English. Wow. And they You're decided not. to help us, you know? They yeah. decided to help us. They would they would wait for an hour. They would wait for an hour with us until the parents, our parents, we, we can call them our parents, those who were taking care of us, mm -hmm. until they come to collect us and then they will take us home. It happened three consecutive days. Yeah. Until the last day we decided, we said to ourselves, No, we need to write down this name so that we will not get lost. Mm -hmm. So that experience it helped us. You know, not only these people who waited for us, but remember our parents at home, they were also worried mm -hmm. because they knew we were foreigners mm -hmm. and they needed to take care of us. And whatever would have happened to us, they were the first people to be contacted. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, after everything, after all this, they were all smiling at us. And I tell you, until today, I still speak with my parents. I, tell, I even tell myself that, you know what, I've got a family in front of mm. and every time i get free time they always want me to come to krakow oh. yeah, every time and they call me their son oh. so imagine i'm far away from home but i have got a home away from home mm. so it's something that is breathtaking and um you know in um living in a different country uh, you, most of the people they have always uh, said you know when you travel to a different country we always have a challenge of racism mm -hmm. we always have something that will always hit us every time especially when it comes to racism mm -hmm. i can only say as for me i have never experienced mm -hmm. racism mm -hmm. i've never experienced that discrimination it's there you can see it coming mm -hmm. but then i decided to tell myself that i will not tolerate it Mm -hmm. Because the more I tolerate it, the more it will haunt me. Mm -hmm. So I have met more than love instead of racism. Mm -hmm. How? Uh, Polish is a difficult language. Is it? <laughs> you need... I'm, I'm used, imagine, I'm used to speak um, words with vowels, right? Uh -huh, yeah. I'm even sure now it would vowels. Clara, you can speak Shona. I think maybe you started speaking Shona even within one month or two weeks of uh, getting into Zimbabwe. That's because I speak Polish. <laughs> Very easy. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it, it, Shona and English, it, they are just smooth. Maybe because I grew up speaking, maybe, I don't know. But <laughs> Polish, gosh, I don't know how to say. But I told myself that, you know what? In as much as Polish is difficult, mm -hmm. and most of the people they were even telling me Polish is difficult, mm -hmm. I told myself that, well, how about those people who speak it? How do they speak mm -hmm. it? I will try my best. Mm -hmm. So the little that I know, is that if I tell you that nowadays I meddle, the people that who are my friends in Poland, mm -hmm. the people that I sing with in choir, they are Polish people who don't even know how to speak English. Mm -hmm. But I'm among them. Mm. being one with them mm. because I tell myself that if they tolerate me it means they also want to learn mm. to my surprise they want also to learn from me in a while I'm learning from them at the same time mm -hmm. and they are surprised and I'm not long but sometimes when I'm in church I'm the only black person who is there the whole church and you know Polish churches they are always full mm -hmm. I'm the only black person who is there but I'm not afraid mm -hmm. 
you know sometimes when I'm, I'm not even i don't even go to church you know in a, a, a parish where there are about seven priests you you hear them calling you what happened to you today what's happening to the point that i have become a mm -hmm. so when i'm when someone speaks about me and I, I i hear that these guys are talking about me in polish i respond to them in polish and then they will realize that their secret has been unveiled oh. so imagine how ashamed you will be uh -huh. oh this guy knows our language and then they quickly want to tell to be good people already i have already crushed them from their racism side and there is this part when someone is drunk and coming to you do you understand that the person is drunk he's just doing whatever he wants to do because he's drunk just ignore the person you go continue with the life that goes on just put the negatives aside the positive carry it on and move on that's how life is all about mm. but if you focus on racism these people are doing this these people are doing this, and without ignoring them or without pushing them aside not only by not physically but mentally anyway you will always meet racism every mm -hmm. time racism will always be there mm -hmm. but it's your mind how do you approach that mm -hmm. so uh, since i came here look it now i'm talking with you mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. we are just at home and i'm enjoying yeah i'm exploring yeah and i i love it i'm i'm so loving it oh that's beautiful i'm so loving it and uh not forgetting that i i also miss home no, of course, of course. We, no we, we've already seen that like you just said Zimbabwe is waiting for you saying my son over there is doing good things but he will come back and feed me <laughs> <laughs> or he is feeding me where right where he is no that's that's very beautiful yeah yeah no i was very touched by your story and actually your your ability uh you know and i think there's something about um when people fall in love with your country like for me when people fall in love with poland i feel very good you know i think all people who are uh you know like f somehow close to their country i don't know how to put it because it's not patriotism patriotism has become political but it's mm -hmm. just this sentiment you know That's like it. like we are good people here we have a good community we have we want other people who come to feel good here, just like we do. We want them to feel at home. And mm -hmm. uh, and actually in Zara, the movie also, uh, the topic of immigration is addressed a lot, mm -hmm. um, a lot. Well, there's the, the whole issue even of people coming back home after having been in another country for a very long time. This idea of coming home to pray, coming mm -hmm. back to pray, coming back to coming back home actually and coming back home to yourself wherever you are so uh so i was very i was very touched um that uh, also there's something about when people from the outside when they come to your country and they see what's good about it you know because there's so many so many things that we can we can go to a foreign country like a you know like a tourist you know, for a week and you can say ah you know this is dirty there's uh there's graffiti here this is stupid, these guys are drunk, this is broken, okay, let me leave and go home now. Yes, yes. And uh, then the rest of us, we sit here, we listen to those stories and we feel a little bit down. But when somebody comes here and they say, your people are good, uh, your hospitality is good, uh, your culture is great, uh, then it lifts all of our spirits, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I, uh, so I really love that about about how you feel here and how you feel, and that this country on all of these levels has welcomed you here. And yeah. which, yeah, go ahead. And I, I, I forgot something. You know, yeah. there's always something, something about Polish people. Of course, I have met some people who were so violent to me. Yeah, that was. They, they were drunk they were so violent we do have an alcohol but problem. then but oh, then gosh. i managed i managed somehow to find my way out like always and then i just left them like that mm. there is always one thing that i have seen in polish people polish people are so uh in, in if it's political political or in politics when it comes to voting we call it the rigging they rig mm -hmm. how when they when you just speak one word in polish they quickly jump and say, wow, you speak good Polish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they have got um, a way of encouraging. Mm. They, were, they have a way of encouraging. Mm. So that way, it encourages you that, okay, you are saying Polish, Polish is difficult. 
But you actually speaking good and then it encourages you to, 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 to speak more or to learn more. Mm -hmm. Not only one person or two people who have done this to me, but I have experienced many people saying, oh, you speak good. By just, by just saying a hi or by just saying Jindo bread, they say, wow, you speak Polish. Wow, you speak Polish. Mm -hmm. They love it. Mm -hmm. So they encourage you one way or another. They perpetuate you. So mm -hmm. in that situation, you always feel loved. You know, when you do something and you are praised, the small, small thing that you do and you are praised, it gives you more courage and more energy to continue to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's very true. That's yeah. what I've experienced also. And I, I also remember that very well in Zimbabwe as well, <laughs> as learning Shona. Yes. Uh, and having people, you know, you say one thing, you say, Mike, I see you and you, and oh, you know, they, they <laughs> love it. But I, I think it's the same, the same impulse, which mm -hmm. is that, uh, and it does take uh, wisdom to recognize that um, somebody is trying to find a point of communication with you. Mm -hmm. They're not, uh, that we are all people. Yeah, we're, right. we're trying to find ways to build bridges to each other. We're not, we're not looking to look at a foreigner and say, oh, well, they have nothing to do with me or I have nothing to do with them. Exactly. In some ways, I would hope that our whole world is evolving towards that understanding of, uh, of all people, mm -hmm. that there's no us and them. Uh, these are, these are dichotomies that have hurt us badly yes, uh, and, and continue to hurt us. But um, yeah, but I, I think that uh, you, you definitely understand differently and I that do. your experience is also giving you that as well, mm -hmm. which is beautiful and wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And also in a way, I mean, of course, in Zara, the movie, the way that uh, it's, um, it has been created, if, if, if I look at the journey of Nzara, uh, how it came from Great Zimbabwe uh, to its premiere, to finding its people in Zimbabwe and then being shut down and then finding its people in the U.S. Uh, where um, uh, it was fed on, it was a monologue, monodrama at that point. Uh, it was just me obsessed with this play that I couldn't find a form for and then finding its way to Poland uh, and the animation studio taking it on and uh, all of these things and then you guys showing up. This is a, this is a, a movie of immigrants. <laughs> this is a movie of, um, this is an international movie in that it has found its people in so many different places around the world. It's not a movie about a culture even though it is very firmly set in Great Zimbabwe. And also it uh, opens the doors for a return to Great Zimbabwe, which I think, I think for all of us in the world, um, it, that means something different for every person. For Zimbabweans, it means one thing. For people outside of Zimbabwe, to, uh, to really open our eyes to how, wise and um, brilliant uh, the civilizations, especially African civilizations, were and still are. Mm -hmm. And what is our blindness that we, that we cannot see that, that we here in Poland don't learn about great Zimbabwe schools, uh, the way that maybe we learn about, uh, I don't know, kings and queens in Britain in schools, right? <laughs> Of course, we have learned a lot about European music. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have learned, learned, learned a lot. You know, I, I didn't give you know about I didn't give you know about um, Austria and Hungary. When I came, really? when I came, when I was traveling, I passed through Austria. I was like, okay, he's Austria. We learned about Austria and Hungary. So Austria and Hungary are they still one country? Or <laughs> I, now I, I go back, I revisit my my history. Yeah. Now I visited Hungary, and I'm like, okay, this is Hungary. I was learning about Hungary. And then I went to Czech, I'm like, okay, it was Czechoslovakia now, there is Czech Republic, and then Slovenia, and then Slovakia, something like that. So all yeah, these, yeah. so you know, all this history is now playing around with me. You see, it's now coming back because I learned about it. Yes. Yeah. So now, it, that time it didn't have anything to do with me. But now, because I learned it in high school, I learned it because my mother fed me with European history. Now I'm in Europe and I'm, I'm now reliving it. I'm like, okay, I learned about this, I learned about this, I learned about this. Now I'm experiencing all these things. Mm -hmm. So this is just history that is coming back. 
And when I visited Torun, I got the chance also to learn about um, uh, Nicholas Copernic. Copernic was like, okay, this is where he did. I learned about him as well. So these all the, are the things that are coming back. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it is important also. I think maybe we could also introduce Great Zimbabwe in the curriculum. Yes, I think yes, so. Yes. I think absolutely. Yes. I think African history needs a revisiting by people who can actually also really see what we are talking about. Yeah, new, sure, new yeah. ways of talking about it, all of it, including Great Zimbabwe. So uh, so watch our movie. <laughs> Watch our movie, guys. Watch our movie. Watch our movie. Yeah. Zara is waiting for you. Yes. We need to feed the nation. Yes. We need the moon to come down. Yeah, we need the moon <laughs> to come down. Uh, yeah, well, uh, thank you so much uh, for this uh, interview, Brian. I'm, I'm so delighted, as always, to talk to you. You have a way with words, as you know. <laughs> Not just in the movie, but otherwise. Um, is there anything, any final uh, words, thoughts, or um, ways also that uh, people can contact you somehow that you would like to tell our, our viewers? Uh, okay, um, first of all, I'd like to thank Clara for, Clara for including me into this uh, project, since I the movie. Uh, it was not always easy, and it is not always easy to be incorporated in such projects you need to find your way out and one way or another i'm in uh, if you want to talk to me you can look for me on facebook brian chris pareta as my personal account or you can look for me on my facebook page happy people international we always encourage you happy people. of course how can you be happy when you're hungry when you're good in zara you need to be fed so that you can be happy so you can also look for our page happy people international on facebook as well as contact us on uh, Nzara the Movie page on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and um, Instagram as well. And I would also like to thank uh, Clara for inviting me for this uh, interview. Thank you very much. Thank Clara. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dino Tenda. Watch our movie. Thank you very much. Bye, <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>